Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get a Space Marine vehicle battle ready in just 10 paints. So I've been looking at my armies, contemplating the Space Marines because they aren't at a full thousand points. And with stores beginning to open up in my area and play looking like it might be possible soon, I wanted to get the Hobby Knights up to a thousand points. And I thought the best way to do that would be to add in a cool centerpiece unit like a Dreadnought, which is what I'm going to be painting up today, specifically a Redemptor Dreadnought. And I'm going to be doing this in roughly 10 colors to get it battle ready. And then afterwards, I'm going to do a few extra things to the base to spruce it up a little bit more and push it beyond the battle readiness. But it's going to be a pretty easy guide, I think, and you can apply this to whatever chapter you're wanting to paint. I'm going to be going with the Hobby Knight color scheme, which does lean a little Blood Angels, but you can do it, like I said, with whatever you're painting up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the hobby table. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. And if you've enjoyed this video specifically or hated it, let me know down in the comments and go ahead and hit the like or dislike button. But I also wanted to talk today about my Patreon, where if you want to see behind the scenes content, including photos and vlogs, as well as an opportunity to help contribute to a brand new series that will be happening on the channel sometime soon, where I am going to be building a brand new army. And my patrons are going to have an opportunity to help me choose which army, what colors to pick, and various other things to vote on. So if you're wanting to make sure to get in on that action, go ahead and check out the Patreon link down in the description below. And I believe voting for the new series will be coming up soon, possibly at the end of July. So if you're wanting to get in on the first of all of the polls and everything and really help me pick that army, make sure to go ahead and check out the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. And now let's get back to the video. As you can see, I've primed up the model using Gracier, my go-to for armored pieces. I've also kept the model in a bunch of individual pieces to help make painting him a lot easier. He's got a lot of little like nooks and crannies, especially around the chassis and the arms that I want to just make sure that I can get my brush into and so that there's color there. And I figured keeping him separate would make that a lot simpler. Let's start with a foundation layer of Basilicanum Gray. I'm pretty much going to be putting this paint everywhere on the model. It's going to go on the chassis, the arms, the legs, the guns, the shoulder pieces. Everything that I have is going to be getting a layer of this paint, but it's mostly going to be a single coating on pretty much the armor panels. For any of the joints, however, I am going to go back and do a second layer of Basilicanum Gray to deepen them because I do want those to appear as like iron or steel or something like that, where it's a true more silvery metal. And so I want the Basilicana to be a little bit darker for that reason. However, the panels we are keeping lighter because much like you might've seen me do on the Stormcast Eternal or the Grotz previously, we're going to be layering additional color over top of the Basilicanum to create a painted effect on this metal. And I really am excited for this because I think it's gonna turn out really cool. So let's get this foundation colored on, make sure to put it in like everywhere and especially into those hard to reach areas where they may be sort of hidden, but when you turn them, you can kind of see it at that one right angle. So make sure to get the brush everywhere you can. I used a large brush for this to try to make it a little bit easier and I do think it helped a lot. It's time to start applying some color to my hobby knight because he's not just a gray boy. We're going to be putting some red on them now. We're going to pull out some Blood Angels red and apply this to the majority of the panels that we just painted. Um, we are going to be leaving some of them available for the trim color that my Hobby Knights have, which is Black Templar. And I don't have to worry too much about being super clean here because the black will just cover up the red paint. So if I happen to get a little bit of red on some of the panels that I do want to end up having black, it's really not a big deal. Now, if you are doing a different paint scheme, this may be a bigger concern. So you may want to be a little bit cleaner. But for me, I felt like I could be a little bit messier. And because I knew I'm going to be doing some cleanup work anyways later on, I'm really not worried about getting any of this red color tone on say the areas where I want it to be gold or green or some other color tone later on, especially on the chest piece.
All of that glorious red is down and dried, so now it's time to work on the trim using some black Templar. I'm going to be putting this on a few key locations on the armor to create some diversity on the paneling, because right now it's very just homogenous, and I don't really like that. I actually ended up using the box that the Dreadnought came in to help sort of define where I was going to have red panels versus black panels so that I could block out my color really appropriately. And I really found this helpful for me. I think it's going to be something I do a little bit more going forward, especially on larger pieces like this, because it really did help me plan much more efficiently where I was going to actually be putting this trim color to help balance it and make it still feel like the red was the dominant color tone, because it is for the army, but that you still got plenty of this darker black tone around. And ultimately, I'm really pleased with what I do. All right, so I am working on some of the limbs, doing some of the detail work with the red and black. And I'm really pleased with how it's going. You can see I am doing work on the arm. And all that I have left is I think I'm going to do a little bit of red on this gun casing. Um, because I've once, now that I've got this stuff done, it's the gun just isn't doing that much, right? So I'm going to block out a little bit more additional color, take care of a few more other things. But so far, I'm super pleased with this. I can't wait to start doing some detail work. Next up, I'm going to be applying some Nuln Oil to all the sections that I left pure gray. I wanted to do this because I wanted, one, I am going to shade the armor panels and everything, but I didn't want to do it in Nuln Oil. I thought that would end up deepening the color a little bit too much and making it a little too dark. However, I thought the Basilicanum could use a little bit of darkening because they were, some of them were a little lighter than I wanted. And I felt like this would homogenize some of the color tones and add a little bit of griminess because for me, I like my models, um, for especially for my Space Marines, to look like they're active, but not super worn out or battle damaged. And this sort of gives me that effect. It gives me a little bit of a weathered look without too much effort. By the Emperor, for once, the cleanup stage is not going to take forever. There's really actually not that much we need to do. It's mostly a couple of pieces on the weapons, as well as some pieces on the chest that will need some cleanup, because they have a little bit of decorum there that we want to do up in a different color. So we're going to use some grace here and just clean those up real fast. Now that the cleanup is done, it's time to apply some of those brighter, bolder contrast colors that I was wanting. So the first one I'm going to use is Warp Lightning. This is my go-to for plasma on my Hobby Knights because it's a nice contrasting color to the red armor, and I think it just pops super well. I'm also going to be using this color on the laurel that is on the sarcophagus that my boy is trapped in. Not trapped in, I guess he was put in there intentionally, but whatever. He's in there and we need him to look super fancy, so that laurel is gonna get a bit of this color. To continue to add to the fanciness of the sarcophagus, we're going to now pull out some Ayandin yellow and apply this to most of the trim that is on there, as well as most of the decorum that's there. The only thing we're not going to be putting this color on is specifically the um, like uh, scroll work that is down there at the bottom of the sarcophagus, where I assume I could probably pen his name once I've named him. I haven't actually named this guy yet. but. I'm really excited for this. It's looking super bright and bold, which I really enjoy. I personally really like a Yondin as a gold tone. It is just a really bright, rich gold, and it just pops so well for me, especially on my hobby nights. With the green and yellow now on the model, I feel comfortable washing the rest of it using some Reichland's Flesh Shade. I'm going to be putting this on the black, the red, the yellow, the green, basically everything except for the Basilicanum gray that I left and washed in Nuln Oil, as well as not on the plasma gun. We wanna keep that as pure of a green as possible because we want it to look like a little bit of a glow effect, which I think the Warp Lightning accomplishes really well. But the Reich Lens is there to one, dirty up the panels, to add a little bit more consistency with what the Nuln Oil did to the Basilicanum, but with a complementary color that works better with the red tones, which I personally really like. It also does, again, add a little bit of that sort of dirty griminess of them being active but and well-maintained, but still like out in the field, they're getting dirty, they're being used. And I really, really like the way that this ends up turning out. The final color we're going to be applying to the Dreadnought himself is going to be Apothecary White. 
Originally, I was only going to be using this for the scroll work, but to keep my color count down below 10 for the battle readiness, I decided to try using Apothecary White on all the skull decor on the chassis and the guns and everything like that. And I actually really like this. I think it's going to be something that I do going forward because I think it actually pops a little bit better against my color scheme being a little bit more of a true white. And the very slight blue tint that the Apothecary has does some really nice work on those skulls. We're down to the base, and for that, I'm going to be using a bit of Astro Granite Debris, which is a new paint that I just picked up because I've, normally I just use the standard Astro Granite texture paint for my Space Marines. Not this time. I decided to try this other paint, and I really, really like it. Actually, a lot more than the other uh, texture paints that I've been using. It's got a little bit of a finer grain, I think, sand in it that creates a little bit more of a true dirt effect. And because that's kind of how I'm using it, um, because I'm not going to be keeping it gray, although you could if you want to, you could just use it as Astro, like that coloring and everything like that. But I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to it to push it beyond the battle readiness. But I really just like the effect and how this paint dries because the textures are awesome. All right, so at this point, the model is basically done. I would call him battle ready. I could put him together, go ahead and mount him onto his base and start playing with him. But his base doesn't quite match exactly what my hobby knights are already standing on. So we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of time to just spruce that up and make it match. And how we're going to do that is by first applying Bielton Green to the entire base. Now that it's dried and everything, you don't wanna do this, of course, until the base has fully dried. This gives me a really nice sort of lush green dirt effect, and I really, really like it, but it doesn't have a lot of variety, unfortunately. The shade does sort of go into the very porous texture paint very easily, and you don't get a lot of natural highlights or shadows that occur on the base. So to fix that, I'm going to do some quick dry brushing. First, starting with a little bit of Nurgling Green, and then followed up by a highlight color of Hellion Green. I chose these because one, the base is green, I want to accent that. Plus these color tones really work nicely with the Gamer's Grass Alien Teal Tufts that I use on my Hobby Nights. So I thought it would blend really well, and it does. I'm actually very, very happy with how the base turns out. So let's go ahead, get this model built up, and then show off the final piece. He's done. I've gone ahead and sealed him and attached his feet to the base. And now what I'm going to do for transport reasons is I'm going to go ahead and magnetize the bottom to the top. So I've got the two pieces here. This magnet's going to go in there. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom first. So I'm just going to use a little bit of zappa gap and you can kind of see the space where I clipped off the, um, oh, there was like a little peg or whatever. I'm going to use that and then hopefully And here he is, my brand new centerpiece to my Space Marine army. And honestly, I'm really happy with him. Look, he's magnetized, he can move around, and it holds really well. I'm actually not worried about like picking him up from the top when I'm playing with him and everything. And it doesn't take too much to get him off, which I'm really, really happy with. I've not magnetized that many models, so I'm super pleased with my like experience with this. And it honestly encourages me for when like going to maybe building some knights or something like that. I can actually magnetize them and their weapons and be able to swap them. It's gonna be beautiful. But let's talk about this Dreadnought because I'm super, super pleased with how the paint scheme came out. I'm normally not a huge fan of painting Space Marines, actually. I find them a little bit dull because they get really repetitive and it's just, I don't know, I find it boring. But the Dreadnought was really fun to paint. I think vehicles in general are something that I've found to be really, really exciting for me personally to paint. I was able to block out the color in a lot more like of a dramatic way than I can on my Marines because they're smaller. Like that's really the thing is they just don't have as much space to play around, in my opinion. Whereas like the Dreadnought did. He had a lot more like little panels that I could block out in like black or red or put additional colors onto. And I really had fun laying that out. And I'm also incredibly pleased with how the base turned out because I did some experimenting with this guy because I've been trying to enhance what I've been doing on my Space Marines bases. And I've added some new tufts, which I really, really like. I think the pink is a nice pop. It doesn't detract from the red at all, but still complements it. It has a blue 
undertone under there, just like my teal grass that I've been using on my Space Marines does. So I think it blends really nicely and it makes them stand out against the new technique that I've put on the basing, which is adding that little bit of dry brushing, which looks awesome. Plus the Astrogranite Debris like, like texture paint, I just like it so much more than the other one that I've been using. It just does more of exactly what I'm wanting. So overall with this particular paint scheme, it just came out exactly how I wanted it to. And I love when that happens. I'm sure you guys do too. Plus this technique, I can really apply and swap to any chapter that I really wanted to, as you guys could as well. You can easily just swap the primary colors to whatever chapter you wanted them to be in the technique still works, which is fantastic. Cause if I ever want to do like, I don't know, a dark angels list or something like that, I could use the same, same technique, but I have really enjoyed this. I hope you guys have too. I, if you have, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more and hit the bell icon, icon for notifications. And if you want to support us extra, you can be like our patrons here and support us on Patreon. But I've been Angela. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week for some more videos. We're going to be having a board game video coming up and I'm very excited for it. Plus some more Warhammer news. I'll see you guys then. I've been Angela. You're watching Hobby Night. Bye.